What's going on, Salt Strong Nation? We are here to talk to you guys today about a very, very highly requested topic, and that's footwear for kayak fishing. Uh, and I, before we kind of get into all of that, I want to address the, the 300 pound elephant in the room. If you are watching the video, I'm one eyed Wyatt today. I'm wearing a pirate patch because I was very excited to make a video for you guys, I was getting some tackle out of my car and bonk myself in the face. Tony, luckily, uh, has eye protection on today. He's got his, uh, his very sophisticated glasses. Uh, so his eyes are protected. He's got two of them. So we'll, uh, we'll be sharing some good stuff with you guys today. Uh, but Tony, we're going to be talking about kayak footwear. What are the big things that you're looking for in a shoe for kayak fishing? So it's really going to, for me, it depends on the time of year. You know, in the summertime, I don't mind my feet getting wet. You know, it's nice to have a little bit of a cooling effect on your feet. So, uh, you know, I'll go with shoes that let water in that way. Once I get in the kayak, you know, they kind of air dry and, you know, you're just comfortable the rest of the day. But in the wintertime, I'm looking for something that's going to keep my feet dry and keep my feet warm. It's the worst when you're fishing in the wintertime and it's cold out and you have wet feet, you know, it, it'll bother you all day. It could throw off your fishing. So wintertime looking for warmth, dryness, summertime, just really looking for something comfortable that, you know, is breathable and also water will run out. And those are really the, the biggest things for me. Yeah, I, I would definitely have to agree, especially with the cold weather. It's so important that you, you keep your feet dry. I remember when I was fishing in the Carolinas and I'd be kind of hopping out of the kayak and we had those, those low negative tides. If I was wearing shoes that let any kind of water in and my feet got wet, not only was it super uncomfortable, as you said, it was rubbing in your shoe, but that cold water is, it really kind of seizes your foot up and you start cramping. And I definitely remember days where I had to head in because, you know, my whole leg would essentially cramp up from that cold. And it can really cut your day down, uh, especially if you're in the kayak. So that, that is a huge factor for me as well. Uh, as you said, breathability, I, I want to be comfortable when I'm out there, regardless of the season. So the sizing on my, my shoe is, is really important. There are some brands that are a little bit tighter than others, as we're going to talk about later on. Uh, some brands I've totally just stopped using because they were, uh, you know, just incorrect sizing for what I was required to use. Uh, but we, we've been testing out a couple different types of kayak boots and footwear uh, that we're going to be sharing with you guys today. Um, Tony, we want to go, go ahead and share what you've been uh, testing out recently. All right. So in the warmer months, like I said, I'm really not worried about my feet getting wet. So I just picked up a cheap pair of water, water shoes. You can get them at like a sporting goods store. These in particular, whoops, there goes all the sand. Uh, these are made by a body glove and they drain right out you know really lightweight material almost like a tennis shoe but water drains right out the only bad thing is that if you're trying to you know you'll get sand and you'll get some shells in there and that can get pretty uncomfortable but you could just quickly take them off once you're in the kayak and just rinse them off in the water put them back on and you should be good to go so these are the body glove here just regular water shoes. I think Columbia and Hook and some other companies make some like them as well. And um, just like you, I also wear the extra tough boots. I actually stopped wearing these after I found the next ones that I'm going to uh, share here, uh, just because they were a little bit too low, uh, these ankle boots and the bigger ones, they're just too big and bulky. So it was hard to find like that fine line in between. And these I would wear year round and basically just to keep my feet dry when I'm launching the kayak. And also another thing, you know, if you are launching a kayak or paddleboard, you may have to trek through some, you know, rocky areas, high grass, mud, whatever the case may be. And these boots can definitely help with that as well. Along with the other ones we've been testing out, uh, these are made by Flip Rocks. They are neoprene and they're also waterproof. Uh, so they're lightweight. They can keep your feet uh, really dry. Uh, sometimes, you know, if you're, I know uh, your feet, when you submerge them for a while, you got a little bit of water inside. But if I'm just launching the kayak really quick, these work out really well because as you can see there, it's a little bit higher. You know, these are about mid shin and that mid shin length or depth is usually, you know, about the depth that you're going to be launching a kayak. So it keeps your feet nice and dry and also warm in the wintertime. And I have also worn these during warm days. They easily slide on and off. They have plenty of room in them. And you just have one little strap here 
that holds it secure. So you can quickly just undo that strap, take them off. I'll even put socks on when I wear these just to keep my feet from sweating and having soggy feet at the end of the day. So that's what I really like about these. And I know you've been trying out a few as well. Yeah, yeah. So traditionally, I've used the extra tufts as my kind of go-to boot for kayak. So these are the, the wheelhouse version. I think what you had was the the base kind of original extra tough. These are a little bit of a an upgraded version because I knew I was going to be stomping around in oysters and I didn't want the bottom of these to get torn up. But the thing that I didn't like about them was, you know, even though I did purchase the next version up, they still were susceptible to getting cut up by oysters. In fact, the other one I've got over here, just wearing these yesterday and I got in the water with them. And that crack, if you guys remember, I did a review on these last year, that crack that that oyster shell sliced up when I was walking around in last year has, has expanded. And now when I get in the water with these, they will let water in. So you, they are waterproof when you get them. If you're walking around in sand and grass in Florida, not really anything you have to be concerned with, unless for some reason you puncture these with a hook or something happens to the outer shell, which is not as tough as extra tough, I guess would, uh, would claim them to be. But if you do puncture that outer shell, it will let water in. And it, it doesn't necessarily render these useless because when I was launching, uh, I did get water in them because as Tony said, that cuff, that's kind of, it looks like it's high, but when you're launching a kayak, you're definitely going to be stepping in water deeper than this. If you want to get your kayak out and, uh, you're going to get water in it. The thing that I liked the most about these, especially when I was up in the muddy marshes of the Carolinas, I had other boots that I was trying out the Sim zip it booties. Uh, those are a little bit more of a wading boot and with wading, you have those neoprene socks. They're not really sized to be worn with anything other than that stocking foot that comes with waders. So even if it, you would have to put on three or four layers of socks to get the correct fit, uh, if you know, you were wearing those. So when I bought them in a size 12, they were way too tight on my feet. Uh, cause you're supposed to, when you buy waders, uh, wading boots buy two sizes up. So it, they just don't have a great fit. The zip it booty twos. I just completely stopped wearing them again. They were tight. I mentioned that in the review last year and I switched completely to these. These were much easier to clean out when I got mud in them, just cause you literally can slip them off your foot and dump it out. It's like the easiest clean I've ever had with any shoes, even better than any of the, the shoes that we're going to be talking about today. I think these, uh, maybe you would agree the flip rocks are okay, but that neoprene does kind of soak up some material, maybe some mud sometimes. If it's just sand, no big issue, but these spray out really easy because they've got the netting in the bottom. And the only neoprene I believe that's on these is like right around the actual cuff itself. And again, that's easy to reach. So I would say in terms of value, uh, these are very valuable unless you're going to be jumping around in oysters. Um, or if you are trying to keep your feet just kind of relatively dry, you don't care if they get too super wet. Not that big of a deal, but as uh, as we mentioned, we've been testing out these flip rocks, and I have been extremely impressed by these. Uh, when I first got them, you know, uh, I was really surprised at how comfortable they were. They they just kind of look they look very standard. If I had to give them uh, just looking at them uh, a description, but they fit really well on your foot. This strap over here, just a basic little strap. You can adjust it if you've got a little bit of a wider foot or a taller foot. And it fits really well, uh, depending on what, how many layers of socks I'm wearing. We talked a little bit earlier about cold weather, uh, and I'm definitely going to be wearing much thicker socks, uh, neoprene waterproof, and I might even layer two socks on top of that. Uh, and these actually handle that really well because you can adjust that sizing there. Uh, but in terms of the waterproofing on these boots, I can get, when I'm launching my kayak, I can get all the way up here and I, there's no water that intrudes into these boots at all moment you get water over the top, obviously that's going to get in there. Um, but I would, I found that you could actually, you know, take a couple steps in these and your feet would still stay completely dry. And if you're wearing socks, you might not even notice it for a long period of time. But what does happen is the stitching that's right here on that cross. Let me see if I can get it in the light. Yeah, that cross stitching that's on the top of the boot where the, that, that is covered by the strap, that actually will let water in uh, when you wade for, you know, eight to 10 minutes. I, that's when I started to see water getting in the actual boot. So I did, I was really hoping I could use these as a wading boot as well uh, for really shallow water situations when I was fishing for those drum and the deep pockets and holes in the Carolinas, maybe even some small wade fishing in the bays here in Texas. Uh, but unfortunately, after, you know, eight, 10 minutes, these do start to let water in them. So uh, again, 
having water in your boots is not that big of a deal, but you're not gonna be able to fish as long because it's gonna start to hurt, it's gonna start to rub around. And, uh, you know, unless you're wearing a completely waterproof sock, which those are extremely expensive, uh, you are gonna get some water in these, uh, in these boots. But in terms of kayak fishing, these are fantastic. They're super comfortable when I'm pedaling, when I'm standing up in the kayak, they've got a lot of cushion on the bottom of them. Uh, and the neoprene itself around the cup of the leg, really, really comfortable, keeps me super warm in the cold months and it's breathable in the warmer months as well. And I would say, you know, right now, this is definitely the best overall boot that I have and wear when I'm in the kayak. So that's uh, that's my findings on these, these flip rocks versus those, uh, those extra toughs. Yeah, and another thing about comfort, like if you're fishing from a kayak or a paddleboard and you're having to stand up uh, or you like to stand up when you fish like I do, you have to understand that some of these boots are gonna be pretty wide, uh, like the uh, flip rocks. They seem much wider than uh, most of the other boots and shoes that I wear. Now you can just see a comparison here. The flip rock boot is a little wider than the extra tough boot and much wider than like a waterproof shoe or something like that. So if you're standing up in a kayak, you know, it's pretty narrow. Some kayaks have a pretty narrow area to stand in. And I do find that, you know, the sides of my feet are sort of pushed up on the side of the kayak and it can get uncomfortable at times. So you want to take that into consideration too, if you are standing up fishing. What I'll do most of the time is if I'm standing up fishing for a while, I'll just take the boots off. You know, I'll have socks on and it's just much more comfortable that way than if I'm heading back to where I came from right before I get out of the kayak, I'll put them back on. That way my feet can stay, you know, dry and protected. And also another feature about these boots that I wanted to share that's pretty cool is that they have pads on the bottom and they're Velcro. And with these pads, just uh, put this to the side here because a lot of sand will come out. They're super strong Velcro, as you can see there. And these pads come off and they have interchangeable pads that you can put on these boots. So if you're walking around on a slippery boat ramp, they have one with spikes on them. As you can see there, they also have one that's felt. So, you know, if you're walking around on algae and stuff like that, the felt will actually help with your grip. And you can just put these right on there because they are Velcro. They just pop right on like so. And once you have them on, you do want to stand on them, you know, help push that Velcro in more. It's kind of tough to do with just my hands here, but you can see it's sticking on there really well. And another thing when you do have these pads on, over time, you're going to get sand and debris on the Velcro. Make sure you clean that off. You can use a brush or high pressured water. Make sure to clean that off or they're not going to hold as well as they would if it was clean. So be sure of that. And they sell all different types. They have one that's like a sort of like a boat shoe material. That way you're not scuffing up the deck of your boat. They have these spiky ones and then they have the felt ones. And I believe there are some other ones that they have, but I think that's a really cool feature of these boots as well. Yeah, I know they make water shoes that have kind of the open face as well. Um, I, I think we chose the boots just because they provided the most versatility for all different seasons. Obviously, it's a little bit ridiculous to have to buy 10 or 12 different pairs of shoes for, you know, wading and kayaking and being in boats. And uh, I'm guilty of that. So the flip rocks were really nice because you've got a little bit of, of modular capabilities with those pads, being able to get into different fishing scenarios. You know, you've got the, the deck tracks uh, for the pads on those flip rocks. If you want to walk around in a boat, the felt pads, if you're fishing on rocks, I'm going to be using those when I go fish the jetty here in the coming months. Uh, so that's, the, that's going to be extremely helpful. The grip pads, if you're fishing, I know a lot of the guys that fish for, these were made for the striker fishermen up in Jersey and New York, uh, and they're walking around on all those big rocks. Um, and I know they handle those areas really, really well. It's where they got popular and that's where we kind of caught on to them uh, from some of our members that are up in that area. And, uh, you know, they're really comfortable for the kayak as well. I I've really found myself enjoying them a lot. I still wear the extra tufts when I'm just kind of popping in, popping out for a quick trip. Um, but if I have my, my flip rocks that are clean, because I will switch depending on what smells, what's still wet. And that's really important. Those dry really quickly too. Uh, it takes, I would say, if you leave them outside, once you're done fishing, they dry usually within a day. My extra tufts sometimes would take two, three days to dry as well. So uh, they're great uh, for, you know, 
all kinds of different scenarios. And again, I think they provide the best overall value for uh, kayak footwear. Yeah, for sure. I'd have to agree there. I mean, whenever I'm going out on the kayak now, it's usually going to be these flip rocks. And then if I'm on a boat, that's when I'll wear the extra tufts. Or if I'm just, you know, fishing from shore or something like that, especially if it's going to rain or something, the extra tufts are really nice because they're rubber and you just put some rain pants on and you're pretty much dry. But same thing for these, really. I mean, if you're out in a rainstorm or something, you have rain pants that go over it, should keep your feet pretty dry. And uh, another thing, if you are wearing these, you know, on rocks or on a boat ramp, make sure you secure that strap really well before you get out there. Because what you'll find is that because these are pretty wide, there's a little bit of play uh, in the foot section. So if you don't have that strapped on tightly, your foot's going to be sliding around in the boot. And you don't want that to happen, especially if you're on a slippery surface or, uh, you know, a surface that's at an angle, you could end up hurting yourself. So make sure that is secured nice and tightly before you do whatever you're going to do with them. Yeah, I would say they definitely are a shoe that's maybe, I, I would say they're pretty true to size, maybe possibly half size up. Um, I, I would say stick to stick to what you usually wear in terms of your average tennis shoe there are a lot of brands out there that you need to kind of just size based on what brand it what brand it is i know sims they do size a lot of their stuff small orvis is kind of in the middle there it's a little bit small to a little bit you know true to size the extra tufts i find are 100 percent true to size those probably have been what fit my feet the best uh, and the flip rocks are just a little bit on that large side. Uh, do you feel that that's uh, kind of similar? What about those body gloves? Are those kind of true to size? Yeah, the body glove, I don't even know what size these are anymore. Let me see here. <laughs> so these are, yeah, yeah, these are an 11. I usually wear, you know, depending on the shoe, like a 10, 10 and a half. And that brings me to the next point was if you are going to wear any type of shoe on your kayak or paddleboard, I highly recommend going, you know, a little bit bigger, or maybe if it's too big or not too big, but if you order a size and it's a little bit too big, don't be too concerned because it's better if it's a little too big, as opposed to being really tight and snug on your foot, especially with neoprene, because when it gets wet, it tends to have like a suction effect on your foot. And I've had times where my foot just like feels numb or it feels like it's cramping up and it can be really uncomfortable. And if you have a shoe size or you order a boot or a shoe that's a little bit bigger, you're going to be a little bit more comfortable. And you can also, with these, like we said, you can put on some layers of socks just to fill in that gap if needed. Yeah, I, I, I definitely agree with that. When in doubt, size is just a little bit larger. It leaves a little bit more room for play. It's going to be much more comfortable. That, those, that, those cramps, they can catch you off guard, and they absolutely will end your day of fishing if they're bad enough. You don't think about it, but then, then it hits you, and it's there. Um, yeah. and you feel it for a while, even after you take off the boots, <laughs> Yeah, you're, you're sore, man, you're sore for the rest of the day. It's uh, it's just one of those things that you probably wouldn't know about until you've done a bunch of kayaking and in a bunch of different types of boots. And I can definitely say that the ones that are a little bit larger tends to happen not as much. And so I would say that uh, we've just about covered everything there is to cover about, uh, kayak footwear. Is there anything we missed out on Tony? No, I think that's about it. Other than, you know, going back to the comfort thing, everybody's feet are different. You know, people, some people have high arches, some people have flat feet, some people have long skinny feet and the footwear, whatever works for one person may not work for somebody else. So definitely shop around and find what works for you. I mean, that's what we had to do. And we just happened to come across these flip rock boots and sounds like we both give them a thumbs up. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's the big thing. And I just recorded a tip on uh, choosing waders for wade fishing. And the biggest tip at the end was get into a shop that has these boots, go to the biggest fishing tackle shop you can find. There's a good chance they have a footwear section and try on different kinds of boots. I know the design of extra tough, uh, I believe extra tough was the one that kind of came up with that design, but there's a lot of different brands that have kind of mimicked it. And I, I've heard from some people, they really like the Huck ones. Other guys, I know they like the Gruden deck boots, things like that. Maybe you want a higher cuff on that design of boot, or you'd rather go with the neoprene flip rock. Really just get into a shop that's got a lot of different options. Try different brands on and figure out what fits your foot the best. There's no one size fits all answer here as we're talking about shoes, but it's, uh, it's really about getting in there and figuring out what brands are going to work best for your foot. For sure. 
Absolutely. Well, guys, I think we've wrapped up everything there is to know about kayak footwear. If you'd like to learn how to make the most out of your kayak boots, when you do choose which ones you're going to get and you get out on the water, you're looking to catch some more fish, I highly recommend you join us in the Salt Strong Insider Club. Definitely. And you can save tack, you know, save money on tackling gear as well. The stuff that we fish with, that's what we sell on our shop page because it's it's tried and true. It's what we go out, buy with our own money. We try it out. We say, hey, let's try to get this on our shop page so our members can benefit from it as well. So definitely take advantage of that. If you are one of our insiders, you get up to 20% off everything on the shop page. So pretty good deal. Yeah, it's a little bit of a no brainer. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in and we will see you on the next episode. So if you're new to Salt Strong, just know that we're the best online fishing club in America because we literally guarantee that you'll be catching more fish in less time while saving money on your tackle. We do this by providing you with premium education, an exclusive online fishing community, and access to group discounts on the best saltwater fishing tackle. To learn more, go to saltstrong.com. We hope to see you in the Insider Club family soon.